Hi everyone, uh, welcome back for another episode of 10 Minute Drawing Techniques. Uh, actually, they're no longer 10 minutes anymore. I just let the camera roll and uh, separate the thing into 10 minute segments. Um, anyway, uh, last episode we dealt with uh, silhouettes as well as, um, well, the last couple episodes we did silhouettes, uh, direct lighting, and direct uh, sh and shadowing that's cast from direct lighting. Um, what we're going to deal with now is indirect light. Um, I'd like to explain uh, the concept of diffuse reflection. And also one more thing. Want to deal with a concept I'd like to call enclosure. Something that only occurs in diffuse lighting situations. So, um, just to recap quickly, uh, we tend to draw our objects in space using silhouettes. Um, we make them sit in space by adjusting their size. So if I want an object to appear further away, I can make it smaller and move it further up on the ground plane. Um, the other thing that's another large depth cue, uh, a very, very important depth cue you can use is the, the shadow. And the shadow is going to tell you, hey, this object is most definitely sitting on the ground. It also tells you the direction of the lighting. Uh, it can tell you if an object is sitting on the ground, just you know how far away from the ground these objects really are. So that's all to do with the silhouettes and all has to do with shadow casting. And direct lighting is dealing with how the surface turns towards the light. So the more a surface turns towards the light, the more it lights up. It's like rain. The more you turn your hand to catch falling raindrops, if you turn your palm so that your palm faces up, it catches the raindrops much more readily than if it's turned sideways. So this is the direct lighting. And the other thing we learned as a, con as a consequence of the direct lighting and having to do this blending is the paint to technique. That is starting with a weak pressure and increasing your pressure, the stylus pressure, to blend upwards. Now, dealing with indirect lighting, indirect lighting is any time you have lighting uh, indirect lighting is, some, is the kind of lighting that you typically only see in areas that have no direct lighting. Um, that's because indirect light is typically much, much... Um, well, indirect light is second-hand light. It's light that is missed. It's, you, you've got all this light that's coming down. It's been caught by this solid object. Um, some of the light which has not been caught is, has been, is missing, missing the object altogether, and so it's lighting up the, the ground behind the object. And the thing is that as long as you can see something, you know, if, if you can see an, if you can see shadows on the ground, well, the only way you can get shadows on the ground is if if the ground around it is being illuminated, and you can see that because that light is bouncing back and it's hitting your eye. So some of that light, not it's not as if all that light's going to hit you in the eye. A lot of that light's really just scattering. It's going in all directions, and it's going to light up the back side. of your object. Exactly how much, I'm not sure the hard and fast rules of it, but one thing I am certain is that over here in this region of shadow, this is one area that will not bounce the light back. So I feel I can probably dim that down a bit. But all these other areas oops, are capable of causing some of that light to bounce. So all this is going to be catching second-hand light. Same thing with this ball. I'm going to light it up with a bit of second-hand light. Now, <coughs> um, 
an interesting thing that's going to occur. If we view all this from the side, we've got light that's coming straight down. And we view all this from the side. We have a, we, we set up a, a cylinder. So we're looking at the cross section of a cylinder. We've got ourselves some ground. <coughs> and you've got relatively straight light beams. So they're going to cast shadow like so. And for all of you who have been asking what program this is, this is TV Paint. It's called TV Paint Animation. It's an animation software, but it's very good. I, I like using it for painting. I'm not much of an animator myself. I, I use it for, for painting because I like the way the brush responds. But you can use any program you feel will give you a brush that is constant size and variable pressure for the Paint 2 technique. That's all you need. All right. <coughs> so this thing is casting its shadow straight down, um, and the surface is going to is is pointing straight up here, pointing slightly here at an angle, and over here it's pointing even more at an angle. So light's going to be catching at a glancing angle. So probably about here, your light is going to not going to be able to reach. So we're going to have some shadowing occurring. And yes, I'm using my Paint 2 technique. If anything, the shadow will become darkest right here at the border. Because the moment the, the surface is parallel with the direction of the light, it can no longer catch light, and so it's simply not lit. And something that is not lit, not receiving any light, any diffuse surface which is not receiving any light, will appear black. Elementary, my dear Watson. Okay. And I'm going to use the same Paint 2 technique to blend upwards. and downwards. This is a good time to practice your blending. Always blend towards the color that you're using to paint with. So if I'm painting with white, I start away from the white and I blend towards the, the, the white, increasing my brush stroke pressure. That's how I get this nice <coughs> transition. Alright, finally we have some light Some of that light is coming down here, and it is falling down, and it is striking the surface, and it is redirecting, it's bouncing, it's scattering in all directions. And as it scatters, <coughs> it loses a lot of energy. Um, it, it's not so much losing its energy, it's just that the, the, the light is no longer as intense. Um, so this ball is going to be hit from multiple parts. If anything, this entire lit region right here, this entire lit region, this becomes a light. It becomes a light that is capable of emitting in all directions. It emits in a field like that. Same thing here. This area here also emits in a field. So what you're going to get something like that. Now, at some point, um, this surface, it fits all the way to here, right? So, at this point, at the shadow edge borders, <coughs> that light is only capable of reaching up to here. Can't reach any further. And any light that's striking here when it scatters will only be able to strike that surface. It's only able to encompass this much of the sphere. And the same thing can be said for 